none of this was taught to you in medical school. Yeah, none of it. I didn't know any of it. Um, uh, in your book, you allude to like being need to be having some humility uh, in science, and I didn't know. I knew a little bit about pesticides before writing this book. I didn't know any of it. I didn't know that this chemical existed, trichloroethylene. So I have to bring it around me everywhere I go. I knew nothing about the effects of air pollution on the brain. Um, we're just really not taught it. Um, as you alluded to, I think we live in a genetics paradigm. You know, one of the great scientific advances of the last 50 years is the identification of DNA and genes. And we've identified lots of lots of rare conditions that are principally due to genetic risk factors. But if you think about it, really common diseases can't be due to genetic risk factors because they would have been screened out. So um, uh, these common diseases like Alzheimer's disease, although that does have a genetic component, Parkinson's disease, small genetic component, type 2 diabetes, all these diseases have huge uh, factors that are tied to the environment, many of which are underplayed or not even discussed. I mentioned I just came through from in from Austin from a Parkinson's meeting, and I don't think there was a single dis topic on the environment and uh, Parkinson's disease. Wow. So they we'll, we'll, they even, I'll just tell you one little vignette, yeah. there's this huge study being done by my colleagues at the Parkinson's Foundation uh, called PD Generation, and they're looking for genetic risk factors in people with Parkinson's disease, and they've tested thousands of people throughout the country, including Los Angeles, have signed up to participate in the study, and among the known genetic risk factors, they have found them in 13% of people. Hmm. That means in 87% of people with Parkinson's disease, they haven't found any identifiable genetic risk factors. Wow. That's shocking. Yeah, I mean, Alzheimer's disease has the, you know, there's the APOE4 allele, um, but plenty of people develop Alzheimer's disease that are that are negative for the APOE4, the, you know, that are 3-3. Um, and plenty of people with the APOE4 allele don't go on to develop Alzheimer's disease. And the APOE4 allele is known to have an interaction with air pollution. Hmm. So if you carry that allele, your risk of, uh, of damage of Alzheimer's disease in the presence of air pollution is heightened even more so than the absence of it. And that's true for Parkinson's disease genetics. So we know that almost every identifiable gene, genetic mutation or, or genetic cause or risk factor for Parkinson's disease is known to have an, an interaction with a certain pesticides, uh, for example. So the genes might explain why some individuals who are exposed to these uh, toxicants develop disease and why some don't. But we even know for Parkinson's disease and as you alluded for Alzheimer's disease that people who don't carry the genetic risk factors, lots of people develop the disease. Is there a genetic risk factor for Parkinson's disease that is as well defined as the APOE4 allele is for Alzheimer's disease? Yeah, yeah. So uh, 1980s, uh, the first uh, gen gene that was responsible for causing Parkinson's disease was identified. It's in a gene called responsible for a protein called alpha-synuclein that we know is misfolded. Some of your listeners might know that in in Alzheimer's disease, the misfolded protein is amyloid, and Parkinson's disease is a protein called alpha-synuclein. That, gene that genetic mutation is in the order of like less than 1 in 10,000. Mm. Um, even the most common genetic risk factor for uh, Parkinson's disease, genetic cause, is a LARP2 mutation, uh, more common among Ashkenazi Jews uh, and North African um, Berbers, but that's only 2 to 3%. The most common one is a GBA, a mutation in a gene called GBA, and that's also tends to be more common among Ashkenazi Jews, and that's um, five to ten to maybe twelve percent of the population. Um, but the vast majority of people who carry a GBA mutation, ninety percent, never go on to develop Parkinson's, and sixty percent of people who carry a LARC2 mutation don't go on to develop Parkinson's. Hmm. In other words, those genetic mutations alone are in insufficient for the vast majority of individuals to develop the disease something more has to happen and that something more i think is the environment where where was the turning point for you in, in your career where you started where where these environmental factors started to really uh emerge to you as being important so I, i'm an academic i'm a professor of neurology at the university of rochester and one of the gifts of being an academic is you get a sabbatical and I had a sabbatical about five years ago and i started that sabbatical by working with my colleagues writing this book and as part of writing the book I read all this great work done by my colleague, Dr. Caroline Tanner at UC San Francisco, and she had done a series of studies beginning 20, beginning 40 years ago that had documented that certain exposure to many of these pesticides was associated with a heightened risk of Parkinson's disease. She did a great uh, twin study looking at rates of Parkinson's among identical twins and fraternal twins, 
if something's purely genetic, you're going to see really, really, really high rates, uh, concordance rates, agreement rates among identical twins and less so among fraternal twins. She found the opposite. She found that there were no major difference between the rates of uh, Parkinson's disease among identical twins and paternal twins, suggesting that genetics was not the predominant factor, but that environmental factors were. She did studies linking ro uh, a pesticide called Paraquat sprayed in the Central Valley of California to a 150% increased risk mm. of developing uh, Parkinson's disease. Um, the more and more I read her thing, I was like, well, wow, here it is. It's right here in front of us. And, and the terrible thing is it's underneath our noses. These are things that we're inhaling. Um, and so once I saw that, you reached the conclusion that Parkinson's disease is preventable. That's a function, largely a function, likely a man-made disease. Hey, if you like that video, you need to check out this one here and I'll see you there.